All right, this is the example scene. Let's go ahead and turn off the light and the environment. And uh, let's isolate the scalp. As you can see, I cut the scalp into four sections. And let me go to weight edit mode. We have the front left, front right, and the, the back right and the back left. Now this is particle hairs, which means that it's not yet usable in, in geometry node. And uh, we need a way to convert these hairs into something that can be used in geometry node. Now you can actually go to particle edit mode and uh, create the new hair system from this, but this way is not procedural. And if you want to simulate uh, physics on the hair, then it's uh, kind of useless. So we need a procedural way to uh, convert these two hair systems into something that can be used in a geometry node. Now the process of converting the particle hair is actually very simple. So let's create a plane, make sure that uh, it stays at the center of the world. Now create a geometry node, create a new geometry node group, and call this one hair template. We can go ahead and get rid of the geometry input because we don't actually need the plane. We just need a, um, a mesh type object. Let's rename this to uh, front hair convert. There we go. All right, create a uh, line, curve line, and set this to direction, make sure it's facing the Y direction and the length doesn't matter. Next, we will resample the curve and finally, we convert the curve to mesh and connect it to the output. And we also need to create some inputs to control our node group. There we go. And we need an option to convert it to mesh or not. So create a, a switch node and uh, connect the curve to mesh to the true input and uh, the resample curve to the false input. And finally, connect the bool boolean, the switch input to the uh, group input node. And let's rename our uh, inputs a bit. This is going to be convert to mesh. So if we set this to zero, we will have a curve type output and uh, if we set this to 1, we will have a mesh type output. And uh, let's go ahead and rename this to uh, samples. Let's collapse this and uh, create a particle instance modifier and select the scalp, select the front particle system, and be sure to uh, turn on create along path, otherwise it's not going to work. All right, now we have this very nice hair system that can be used in geometry node. But in order to use it to create children hair, we need to convert it back to a curve type. So create another geometry node modifier and uh, create another node group called uh, mesh to curve. All right, and in here we simply drop a uh, mesh to curve node and that's it. All right, now let's do this again for the back hair. So duplicate it and uh, change the name to uh, back hair convert and go to the modifier and change the uh, particle system to the back hair. And uh, since the back hair is a lot longer, we need to go back to the modifier and uh, increase the uh, number of samples. Something higher, maybe uh, 30. Okay. Now let's go back to uh, the scalp and test our hair converter. So uh, let me let just add another guide hair here and uh, let's change it to something like this and select the front hair convert and isolate it. As you can see, the hair converter change with the change of uh, the particle hairs. So it's fully procedural and we can go back and change the uh, hair system anytime. All right, now that we have the two hair converters, we can now begin to uh, create the children hairs for the guide hairs. Now, the first node we want to create is the hair interpolation, the static version. 
Now this hair interpolation is uh, very similar to the uh, interpolated uh, children hair of the old particle system. Now if you look online for some tutorials on how to create children hairs using uh, geometry node, then you will most likely find something similar to the uh, simple uh, children hair, which is pretty bad. I personally prefer the interpolated version. Let's go ahead and uh, create an empty hair. There we go. And we don't need it to be parented to the scalp, so Alt P and clear parent. There we go. And uh, we don't need any of these. Let's go ahead and get rid of the geometry input as well. And go here and rename it to uh, interpolate. Nah, let's name it hair interpolate static. Now it's static because it's not stable for animation. We will create an animatable version later on with a little bit of upgrade. It's also a little slower, so we need the static version for fast performance if you just want to create uh, still images. Now let's go ahead and uh, import the uh, front hair, make it relative, as well as the scalp and also relative. And uh, let's connect these to the output. There we go. I mean to the input uh, group. Now the first thing we need to do is to uh, generate some information about the root of each hair such as the uh, index of the root as well as the uh, position of the root. Create a uh, spline length node. Here we have the point count for each spline, I mean each hair. And create a uh, accumulate field node and um, set this to integer. And uh, we're gonna connect this to, uh, I mean, set this to spline and connect this to the value. So now we have this trailing output. This will be the index of the, uh, the root of each hair. So we need to store this uh, value, I mean, this integer value. So create a uh, store named attribute and connect the geometry over. Uh, change this to integer and uh, store it to point for now. This is going to be root index. The trailing, there we go. Next we need to create the uh, root position. So let me just connect this to the output. Alright, and duplicate this node, change this to vector and this is called root position. There we go and create a field at index. Here we go. And the input position, this will be vector, go here. And input named attribute. And this is going to be the root index. There we go. These two nodes kind of store the information to the point level, but uh, there will be cases when we need to store the information at the spline level. So Control shift d to uh, duplicate these nodes and change these to uh, spline. Alright. And we will need a switch. And connect this here and here. Okay. Alright, now we need to... Uh, create a node group based on this. So uh, select these nodes. All right. Leave the two uh, object infos nodes out and uh, select all the others. And control G to group. There we go. And go back out. Call this uh, generate uh, root info. There we go. And uh, now we need to connect this switch to the uh, group input and uh, rename this to store to point. Now for the sake of convenience, we will also output these attributes. This is going to be the root position, okay, and output, there we go. Alright, let's go to the geometry node. 
Now let's take a look at uh, the the attributes. So with the store to point turned off, the uh, root index as well as the uh, root positions are stored in the spline level. But if we turn on store to point, we will have the uh, root index and root position stored to the uh, point level. All right, for the time being, we want to store it at the spline level. Now let's take a look at the guide hairs. We need to uh, delete the uh, unused guide hairs because uh, right now we will only create the uh, front right uh, of the hair. All right, let's get back here and uh, rearrange our node a bit. Now go to mesh and uh, sample nearest surface and sample using the root position here. And uh, we will sample this mesh. And uh, we're gonna go and create a named attribute I mean, it's an input named attribute. It's going to be the uh, front right. And connect it to this value. Next thing we need to do is to capture this uh, attribute. So create a uh, capture attribute and uh, capture it at the spline level. There we go. And now we can decide to uh, delete the spline that has the uh, zero attribute. So uh, create a, a compare node and connect this here and greater than zero, all right. And uh, Boolean math, not, okay. And create a delete geometry node. Delete the lines, okay. Now, we can use these hairs to create the children hairs, which is going to be the hardest part of the tutorial. So yeah, that's going to be the topic of the next video. I'll see you next time.